Hey, everybody. Come in and say hi. I'm still getting set up here. Hey, everybody. Come on in. I'm still getting set up a little bit here, so excuse me. Hopefully you guys can find me. Um, let me see here. Fix my mic a little bit. Karen. Hi, hi, hi. Come and find me and say hello while we're waiting and getting set up here. Mm -hmm. So I'm just... Oh, you know what? I need to go... Where did my phone go? Um, so let me just see if... Here. Hi, everybody. Hi, good morning, Laura and Deb. Hi, good to see you guys. Hey, I'm gonna go grab my phone. I'll be right back. We're still waiting for some people, so. So welcome, welcome. And can everybody hear me okay? Good morning, Michelle. And is it Carla? Oh, you saw me on, on Gaia, Carla. That's so fun. Yeah, that was a fun show. George is like really amazing. Um, he's just a really nice guy. He's so sweet, supportive. Uh, so come on in. We're doing a little angel action today. They have a really important message for you about your power, but we're going to wait till a few more people find me and I'm still a little bit getting set, set up. So say hello to each other and let me know. Let us know where you're from. Um, uh, we're talking about taking your power back. Um, and um, don't we all need a little bit of that right now? Okay, so I'm going to... There we go. Um, they have some really interesting uh, things to say about that. Uh, very awesome. Even learning for me or the way that they're, uh, the angels are framing it or putting it in perspective for us is really, um, I think, really important right now. So we're going to get into some um, fun territory and uh, really talk about some of the things that are taking your power back from the angel's perspective, or taking your power away, zapping your juice, zapping your power from the angel's perspective. And we're gonna also just be talking about uh, what to do about it. And it's a really um, interesting, interesting take on what to do about it. Um, and, uh, and, and so I'll be sharing a few uh, poignant little uh, stories, one that happened recently that made me feel really butthurt, disempowered, and how I moved through it. Pred Prince Edward Island, Canada, awesome. Oh, Kansas, Wichita. Tamara, I have a lot of family in, in that area. Yeah. Kansas, can you believe it? Do I seem like a... Yeah, so how many of you have been feeling disempowered? Uh, let me know what you're feeling disempowered about. I mean, it doesn't take um, a psychic <laughs> psychic medium to know that uh, right now is a very uh, challenging time for a lot of people. We're seeing a lot in the news, but let me know, um, you know what's making you feel particularly disempowered right now. I'm going to go through a little list of, of what Spirit wanted me to share with you about the things to watch. Um, but later on, we're going to have an activation. It's actually Archangel Haniel that's coming through to help us with a little process. Um, but it's important for you to really feel into the part of your life where you're feeling not just a, a little disempowered, a little despair. Some of you are probably pretty adept at not going all the way down the despair road. You, you, you know, you're keeping it grounded and keeping it safe. Um, but if one person on the planet is feeling despair, we're all feeling it on some level. We're just, it's just like at this unconscious level because, you know, we're all connected. And I'll get to how I, <laughs> how I really know that in a little bit. Hi, Beverly. Good to see you, Michelle. Uh, Michelle, you've been exhausted, so your power's been zapped. 
uh, lots of emotions. Heidi's been saying lots of emotions um, and doubt. Oh, Adele, your inner judge. Holy shit. This is this going to be a really good one um, for that and for, for you. Uh, as far as just the information. Hi, Adele, by the way. Oh, my gosh. So Adele and um, Beverly, you guys, they went to Peru with us. We went to Peru last year. And and actually, I'm going to, if I have time, I'm going to share um, a story of my personal journey when we were there, uh, essentially do, doing sacred medicine, um, Wachuma with the shaman there, and essentially tripping balls together, but doing some deep learning. Um, so, so I'm just looking in here, one foot in the old programming and the other in an awakened new programming. Yeah. And Adrian, honey, else coming in for you over the last few weeks. Yeah, I mean, it's really interesting why she's coming at least today. And Sandra's uh, mentally drained and exhausted. So we have an epidemic right now of, of uh, and I'm not talking about the corona. I'm talking about the epidemic of giving our power away. Um, and we give it away so readily. And so how do you know when you give away your power? um well you get all rattled your cage gets all rattled for a long time so we have human emotions man and i i really recommend embracing them you, you're pissed you're angry fuck yeah right you're sad fuck yeah um but when you know that you're giving your power away is when you can't put it down you can't let it go and there's certain types of anger that are really important and sadness i mean it's got to happen sorry guys we're human Hi, Daniel. Good to see you, Daniel. So um, so we are uh, in the process right now of really being challenged um, as conscious beings to, to own our sovereignty, own our emotions, and to move forward, even if we don't know what's going to happen in the future. And so actually, Daniel, you guys, um, has the retreat center that I, uh, in Peru, that we were just, I was just mentioning. So it's so funny that you're here, Daniel. Eventually I'm going to get to my story about what happened for me when we did, um, when we did uh, our plant medicine journey. Barbie, you're needing it today. Okay, so we have, we have some, all oh, the numbers are still going up. So really want to make sure that the people who need this really get to see it. And I know that, um, so if you're just joining me, we are doing a power activation, but it's not exactly what you think it's going to be because the angels always like to throw in little twists and turns here. But I really want you to connect and get in touch with where you've been losing your power. Okay. And then we're going to go through some of the things that the angels wanted me to address here. So... You know who I've been giving my power away to? The conspiracy theorists. It's just been getting under my skin. Now I know conspiracy theories, this broad blanket umbrella, but there's specific um, aspects of the conspiracy theorist thing that is really like, oh my God, it's just like blowing my mind. It's bumming me out. And uh, that's been my most recent. It's not the coronavirus. It's not our current government strangely it is the, the, the conspiracy theorists right so um how you know it's okay because i'm gonna take the power back there i'm doing a whole podcast about it <laughs> so it's like yay okay but until then oh by the way um i don't know if you can see this see this microphone if you're new to this community i also have a podcast and so feel free if you want some more party content um to check it out it's called the golden vine okay so okay see we're our numbers are still climbing people are still finding me but you know what we're gonna get started i'm gonna shut the door before you know folks start coming in you know asking me if i can make them an egg or something so i'll be right back and andrea andrea you really need a miracle so oh, you, you need a miracle, don't we all? So yeah, angels, hello. Uh, I work with angels not because I come from this like incredibly dogmatic place and because I read about them in books. Uh, it's because in working with angels, uh, it works. 
and it helps a lot of people. It changed my life forever. Now, when I say it changed my life forever, it doesn't mean that life doesn't suck sometimes and that I don't have a human experience, right? So some people, when they start working with angels, they're like, oh my God, I feel so better. And they think it's just gonna be like that forever. Um, but then life still happens, right? Hello, pandemic, right? Or like, oh, I can't go to work because I can't, you know, they're not letting me go to work. I was just talking to my hair salon uh, lady. We did some a gorilla haircutting in her house, you know, illegally, I guess, I don't know. But they're still not allowed to, you know, open up their salons right now unless they do it in the freaking parking lot, which is like really lame. Okay, that's just a little side note. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna get bust out my notes here for us. Um, and I'm gonna do my best to convey as usual what spirit really wants us to address. First of all, we have a lot of sensitives here. So if you are sensitive, sometimes you feel butt hurt. You don't even know why you feel butt hurt, but it's because someone in your space is feeling butt hurt or a lot of people in the collective are feeling butt hurt. Okay, so that's one thing that you really need to understand. If you're feeling grief and feeling despair, we're all on some level feeling that. Um, okay, so so they're talking about power because there's been a huge displacement of your power recently. And uh, especially since, you know, maybe springtime. And they want you to understand that, you know, everything is energetics. It's about energy and where you put your energy and what you give your energy away to. Um, and when it comes to power, they really wanted to, me to outline how it, uh, how it is that you're releasing your power and um, giving it away. So this is a really big one for a lot of us right now. This, this one that I'm about to mention, this way, this specific way in which many of us are letting go of our power. This one in particular is we are all in a lesson of how not to do this one. But if you're guilty of this one, spirit wants to remind you that, that that's not where the power is. So some, uh, before I get st uh, really get started in this particular talk, I want you to know that there may be a significant amount of F-bombs, okay? So I wanna prepare you for that. Um, uh, so I just wanna let you know in case you're new to hearing me speak. <laughs> okay, so one of the biggest ways that we are currently messing with us ourselves, it's not just the coronavirus, it's not just our finances, it's uh, how we're looking at our future many of us are future fucking ourselves. And what I mean by that is how uh, you're projecting your energy, your power into the future. Like, how am I going to get out of this? How am I going to make this happen? And spirit wants you to know that every time you, you do that excessively, you put yourself too far into the future, you lose power. So the powerful moment is right here. Another thing that you do is um, you lose your power by looking at the past. So I know a lot of people who are like, really like, damn it, why did I make that investment right before a pandemic? What the hell was I thinking? Or like, why did I spend all this money on this when like, now's the time we need to conserve our dollars. Okay, so then you're past, you're, you're past, you're doing it in the same way, but towards the past. Um, and so spirit wants you to like really be diligent about bringing your energy and you can start doing it now into the present moment because it's in the present moment that we actually solve any problem and many of us are learning how to tune in to the authentic present moment because it's in the present moment that your genius that your spirit team that your angels that your connection with with god is happening and that's where we get the divine spark to create to to begin shifting in whatever direction that's going to make our future um, the the most elevated, the kindest, the nicest uh, possible future. Um, so, so many of us are super guilty of that, and so they just wanted to point that out. Where are you consciously like going, doing it the old way, which is like, okay, you need to manage, you need to, um, what's the word, control the future, and how I'm going to do that? Is this, 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 and this? And many people are losing the capacity to really be able to wrangle their life because there's so many weird variables right now. So the best you can do is be staying here 
in this moment in an embodied place and doing some inner work, not to be cliche, but, but, uh, but that's really important. And Jennifer is saying, I find myself saying butthurt a lot more these days. Yeah, I actually caught, caught uh, one of my family members saying a lot of butthurt. I mean, it's just, it's just up, it's happening. It's just the truth, man. What are you gonna do? Okay, so future fuck, quit doing that. It's right now, okay? Um, and the next one that they want to talk to you about is, and some of us are really feeling this right now, is the standards. Um, holding yourself to other people's standards and doing this as a mother, uh, as a teacher, as a spiritual person, uh, as a married person, as a provider, as a healer, as a community member. Our lives and the landscapes are, of our life is changing right now. We're reinventing ourselves and transforming. And so how much of you is beating yourself up and in despair because your life doesn't look like what you feel like it should look like um, compared to other people and compared to what our society expects of each other, of, of us. So I don't make, you know, I'm not making enough money. Um, I'm ashamed of myself because I don't make enough money. I'm ashamed of myself because I'm, <laughs> I don't do any of my kids homework now that my kids are, <laughs> are home. I mean, personally, um, my kids were here, uh, during, you know, during spring and they're here during inside the house during the beginning and the onset of school. And I'm going to say for like two months, I didn't look at their homework once. Right. And I carried a lot of shame because like, I'm not a super mom and I, you know, I was super stressed and trying to work on um, other things and keep the family alive and all that stuff. But we are constantly judging ourselves and the angels are really kind of pointing to how you are trying to match up to other people, whether it's other, um, and I know a lot of people in our community are healers and they're trying to like match the standards of other healers that they've seen, or maybe they follow certain healers and I'm, I'm not quite like that and oh well. And um, they're saying, be very meticulous on where you're putting your energy and how you're judging yourself. Are you not prosperous enough? Maybe your business just started and it's not getting traction and you're feeling like shit about it. Um, that is sucking your power away. And again, the message is stay perfectly like in tune with yourself. And they have, um, they have a, a specific um, method in coping with that. And so um, the third way that they wanted to mention that you're losing your power is by judging other people and their philosophy. So remember I said the conspiracy theorists are like messing with me. Okay. That's because I'm in judgment about, it's not because, you know, they're, they suck. It's because I'm in judgment about what people should think or a part of me is triggered by that. So where are you judging people? It's really challenging not to be judging people in a time of this level of polarity. And so um, spirit is really wanting you to reel back your judgment of other people if they believe in the, uh, you know, whatever the other side of the aisle is for you to really pull that energy back and allow people to have their feelings. Because to be honest, it is arrogant to think that we know our perspective is the only perspective. It's very arrogant. And so um, giving space for people to just do them understanding that we are all in a collective trauma right now and people are going to cling to whatever makes the most sense for them so that includes these conspiracy theories they're just clinging for a sense of safety okay even though it's like a really bizarre reality safety um from my perspective it is like okay let people get their sink their little teeth into whatever it is so that they can survive so where are you judging people um and again, that judgment is just there to like make you feel better about yourself. It's not actually doing anything, anything productive. 
Um, and Tony saying, yes, I've been judging myself and judging others. Yeah, it's really hard to get through that. And it's hard not to judge yourself, okay? Now, I there's so many other things I can list, but the fourth thing is, is the angels summing all of it up and anything else that you have judgment about, any other drains of power that you're having, they're saying points to this one spoke in the wheel. It's like the center spoke. And, and here it is. They're saying that all of your power drains are somehow related to the addiction to perfection that we have been conditioned with in our cultures. It is this constant measuring up and feeling, are we good enough yet? This consistent, overwhelming striving for perfection, that is the real disease here. It's not your judgment against yourself. It's not your judgment about other people. It's not any of the things that I mentioned. The actual problem is an underlying addiction to perfection with which with we will never meet that standard. We will never 100% meet that standard. And we have been black magic and cursed into believing that perfection is the standard. I mean, we see it in in so much of our um, our media. I mean, we have been indoctrinated from the beginning towards this ideal of perfection, the perfect job, the perfect income, the perfect spouse, the perfect body, um, the perfect fucking children. Okay, so we feel like assholes when we don't have perfect children and then we make our kids feel like assholes when they're not perfect either, okay? So you are under that curse, under that spell. And it is the exclusive reason why you're giving your power away, you know? You want the perfect marriage, therefore, because you want your friends, you want to fit in with your friends. Therefore, you will stay in a toxic relationship forever because people will, because it'll, it'll be proof that you're not perfect. So this old perfection, perfect building, okay, which the United States used to stand on this ideal, this righteousness, even though what we're standing on is pools of fucking blood of the indigenous, of our African Americans. We are standing on, on rape, murder, and we are fucking proud of that, okay? Or we were taught to be proud of that because we were taught that America is righteous and perfect and it is toxic okay and i'm not here to 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 badmouth america but the one thing that i have a problem with is that we scrub down the truth and when we learn how to scrub down the truth like that internally we no longer have the skills to accept our darkness to accept our imperfection to accept the fact that we Gosh, we're not going to make enough money. We may never make enough money. And you know, the, the solution for that, that you're not going to make enough money, you don't have the, the right body, um, that you don't have the right job, that your business is sucking balls, you're not making cash. The only solution, well, there's probably two, but my perfect solution, the angels have a different solution that I'll talk about. But initially, we have to understand that we have to say, fuck it. Okay, fuck it. I'm not going to have the perfect body. I'm not going to have the perfect cash situation. Like my kids overtly suck. And that's okay. My little hellion is a hell ball, but I love them anyways. You know, they're just not going to fit in. So we have to get out of this. We have to fit in my mentality and start being really authentic. Uh, ultra authentic about who we are and and not you know lower the bar a little bit okay <laughs> okay one of my pet peeves and i know some of you are guilty of this it's just my pet peeve is this whole thing of like i can only date my twin flame as if there's only one person 
out there, okay? There's this perfect relationship. That's another form of this sick perfectionism that is prevalent, especially in the spiritual community. You have to be fucking perfect, like vegan and ultra clean and maybe caffeine free and do fucking yoga every day. And I hate to say it, but I don't like yoga, okay? It bores me to shit. I prefer like martial arts and shit like that, okay? But, but like, Okay, and then you have to be super conscious all the time, which is such a bore and, by the way, impossible because we are having a human experience. So we're angry, we're butthurt, we're all of these things. And until we really learn how to, um, what's the word, um, metabolize our dark side, our imperfection, we will constantly stay in a state of disempowerment. Okay, so our culture is not perfect. And it's okay. I love where I live. I love our country. But we have some serious problems rectifying our shadow. And so if the in the United States, if your country has a problem rectifying its own damn shadow, you best believe you have a problem with it too. So what can we do? We can individuate and and indiv like see like accept our shadow, accept our darkness. That the striving for perfection is toxic. But accepting who you are for what you are is so important. I'll give you an example where I was recently challenged by my notion of having to be perfect and 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 reality. Okay, and this is like a you know little private share, but I got to give you this example. You know, I'm a woman, and and women notoriously have issues with their body. And so what I have been doing is avoiding looking at the scale, especially since COVID. So I went to the freaking doctor for my annual checkup. And what do those fuckers do? They make you get on the damn scale. And I was going to try and boycott it. Like, oh, man, I don't want to look at the damn scale. All right. Because like, we're already walking a tightrope in life. Like it takes a lot for, you know, I do my daily ritual, my daily prayer. I'm doing magic like all the time. It's totally working. But we are all in a fragile condition. There's so much uproar on the planet right now that we need gentleness, right? So the last thing I need is to look at my freaking weight. Like you gotta be shitting me as if I need that kind of assault. So anyways, I go to the dang doctor and I don't do the thing that I wanted to do, which was boycott. Like I am not weighing in on that scale. I don't care. This is a fascist condition. And this is just part of the conspiracy. Damn it. You're just trying to keep me down. Keep me hating myself. Keep me hating other people. Right? So I was going to say no. But I was complicit. Okay, all you conspiracy theorists are going to be really, really, really mad that I just complied. I complied. And I, I got on the damn scale. And so I got on the scale, man. And I got to tell you, the number that I was willing to accept, and it was a high number, I was like, okay, if it's as long as it's this number, I'm fine. And then, like, we can work on it. Okay, but it is, it was 10 pounds over that number, 10 fucking pounds over that number. And not just that, it was only like five or seven pounds away from how much I, I weighed when I was nine months pregnant with my second child okay so it was like the worst fucking condition it was like the worst the worst not the worst i guess it could have been worse could have been 20 pounds but i was like you have to be shitting me right and i did it to myself because i complied and here's the thing i was being a super wuss because what you can't handle the truth like, who are you talking to anybody about anything if you can't confront a few LBs, right? So, man, after that day, like that morning, I started almost getting into the old thing. Like, I started punching, like, you know, energetically punching myself in the head. Oh, my God, how could I do this to myself? Okay, and then I started going into, like, even deeper territory because, you know what makes it even worse than weighing the same, almost the same that you weighed when you're nine months pregnant is the fact that your boyfriend is 15 years younger than you, okay? And he's cute. He's really cute. 
And so I had a big enough problem being the old woman standing next to this really sweet, cute guy. But then you add on the fact that I'm like the old fat woman standing next to this really cute, lean guy. And then on top of that, I feel like my hair is falling out, okay? So then, I mean, because I think I'm getting a little perimenopause. I know this is so much TMI, but fuck it, right? Remember I told you the solution? You just got to say like, fuck it. Okay, so then let's put that shit together. Not only am I nine people, like the same weight as I'm nine months pregnant, okay? I'm old and I'm bald. So then when we go out, in my mind, how easy is it for me to go when he's introducing me to people? Hi, this is my old, fat, bald girlfriend, Corinne, right? Okay, this does not match up to my perception of who I am or, or what I feel society standards for me are, especially I live in the Bay Area in California. And let me just tell you, it's all like health, ultra health nut. So like <laughs> having some extra LBs is really confrontational. <laughs> you have to really, really uh, work, <laughs> work, work on this, right? All right. So how did I get through this? This, it's exactly what I just told you. That's how I got through it. I ran the story through my head and then I'm like, Okay, I'm the old, fat, bald woman standing next to this really cute guy. And it made me laugh, right? I shared it with my friend. She starts laughing her ass off. And I was like, you know, this is really fucking funny. Like, it is funny for me. So luckily, I have learned and developed a heightened skill of, I wouldn't call it humility. It's just the ability to laugh at myself. So if you can find a way to laugh at yourself then and and really laugh in the face of this perfectionism thing because to be to be honest if i'm focused just focused on the fact <laughs> that i'm the, the fat the old and the bald woman standing next to this really cute guy then i am negating all the awesome at the same time, you, you just like you, you, you can't really have both. So for a second, I was focused. I was feeling really bad that first day. Like, oh my God, what a horrible day. Oh boy, I got my work cut out for me, right? It was hard enough to lose the weight the first time. And, uh, but you know, after I started laughing at myself, it started changing things. It started like transmuting things for me. And like, you know, by the way, like my life is really awesome. I love my life. I love the people in it. I love what I get to do with you guys, like doing this stuff. And um, one of the ways I've learned how to cope ever since a young age was laughing at the things that are like the most inappropriate to laugh at, okay? I mean, I, you know, like Dave Chappelling everything. Um, and so one of the, one of the things we're gonna do is to help you get you know open up to the field of of joy and of laughter in the face of like you know one of one of your demons one of the things that are zapping your power and and uh, that that is one of them for me i have done a lot of work on myself and i've worked with the angels but i'm going to tell you any fucker who's telling them telling you that their shit is gone is lying it's lying your shit doesn't go away you just learn how to manage and adapt better to it. Okay, so those of you who are feeling shame that you don't have the cash, you don't have the body, you don't have the, the man or the woman, you don't have the kids, whatever. You have to learn how to say fuck it. And then you have to learn how to laugh and go like, fuck it, this is ridiculous. This whole thing is ridiculous. Why the fuck am I uh, worried about my damn LBs? I'm just happy to be alive right now. I'm happy, you know, thank God, you know, because if I'm chubby, that means I can afford some fucking food, which much of our country right now cannot do. Much of the world has not been able to do. I mean, thank God I can eat. So, so, so learning to laugh at yourself, learning to say fuck it is really important. And those kinds of things used to take me into a deep despair, deep self-loathing. And I'll tell you, like by the next day, after I laughed about it, after I just came to grips with it, 
by the next day, I saw it as like, oh, this is a cool project. You know, because luckily with COVID, I'm a little bored. So I'm like, oh, this is like a numbers game. I'm going to get on the scale and I'm going to weigh in and I'm working out. So like I'm working out every day, guys. And guess what? <laughs> Over the last two weeks, I've gained a pound every week. <laughs> so I'm like, you know, fuck you, everybody. <laughs> like, what are you going to do? But I'm having fun and I feel great. Okay, I'm stronger and I love this like new thing that I'm doing. And again, it's because I'm just like, fuck it. It's not about the numbers, but the numbers are increasingly funny. And, um, and I, I knew that this year I was going to have to take my health way, my physical health way more seriously. Like we all have our challenged areas and my physical health has always been like, you know, the back burner. I'm taking care of my kids. I'm doing my business. I'm, you know, loving up on people, um, you know, having meetings with people and doing all this stuff. And so sometimes I just felt like, okay, the body can, yeah, you know, you know how it goes anyways. So that's not happening anymore i'm working on my body <laughs> i'm gaining more weight <laughs> and strangely it's fucking awesome um all right so that's my little <laughs> success lack slash ultimate failure story but it's still fun um and so what in your life can you use that energy towards like where do you need to just go well fuck it okay that's just not where i'm at right now this is where i'm at what am i going to do about it now and today um, and, we, and so, so I want to say, this is how it's become easier for me to shift to joy and laughter. Okay. So now I'm going to get a little esoteric with you because the activation we're about to do is going to work with this law and it's called the law of polarity. And so the deepest despair that you feel is the shadow side of it's like if you think of a coin of extreme joy and laughter so grief despair cry 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 you're on the same trajectory as joy and laughter which means the darkest you can go the higher frequency you can go it's a direct line it's a shortcut to joy believe it or not how do i know this well i've studied the law of polarity but also i had a real experience of this in peru so I take this plant medicine, and for those of you who don't know what uh, plant medicine is, like Wachuma, San Pedro, uh, that's one of the plant medicines. I am a huge fan and believer of plant medicine. Um, I, will, I could talk about it all day and all night, but it does give you access to uh, your heart and what's going on, and it helps detox you in a big way. So went to Peru. I've done Wachuma before, but not quite like this. <laughs> he dosed us up. That, that dang shaman. All right. Anyways. So I got to a place where I was uncontrollably crying and it wasn't just crying. It was like every cell of my body was purging this deep despair, deep grief that no longer had a name. So I started with vomiting, vomiting, like real vomit. And then I went into purging, 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 um, like emotional stuff that I didn't know was there, uh, but it was hours and hours of this. Okay. And so what eventually happened was fascinating to me and taught me everything I need to know about grief and despair is I'm like crying and it's like, ah, like, like loudly. Okay. It wasn't like, <laughs> like that sweet little sorrow. I mean, this is like beyond ugly face cry or ugly cry. It was way past anything I'd ever experienced. And I've experienced some serious shit in my life when I was younger, okay? <laughs> I've, had, I've had the opportunity to ugly cry and despair cry. This was a whole next level. And so I'm crying, crying, crying. And then eventually what happens? It eventually transmuted into hysterical laughter and joy. And it was because that point where I got so deep, I finally, it was like building this tunnel to like, um, like excavating until I could get to this incredible joy. And when I finally tapped into this true source of joy and laughter for no good reason, I, um, in a sense, shape shifted into a rainbow bird and I could feel these feathers coming out of me. And, you know, I know like, oh, you're just hallucinating. When you do plant medicine, you know, it's not a hallucination. That's all I can say. Judge me all you want, but you're just empower disempowering yourself when you judge me. All right. So it really taught me about the, the psychodynamics and how important it is for us not to push our pain away, 
because this is what we learn. If you don't know how to do your shadow, right? In America, everything's so perfect, right? God bless America, right? It's so perfect. We're so amazing, you know? And we're not addressing like, you know, the, the, the shadow of who we are and how we came to be. And, uh, and it's a huge slice of humble pie for, for most, well, for many of us, <laughs> I wouldn't say most of us, um, which is so beautiful and positive, right? And that we're getting a slice of humble pie. So if we're not used to being able to go dark, being imperfect, being ugly, ugly cry, ugly emotion, sharing that with ourselves, not just other people, but when we're so vulnerable that we're sharing our deepest pain with ourselves, then you have the capacity to transmute. <clears throat> but we can't do that because we are medicating ourselves away from our pain. We are putting disease model all over our grief and our sadness and, um, and how, you know, many times the human experience can be full of torture. So I work with angels not to cover over the darkness, but to help us transmute the darkness. And I feel even as a, as a teacher who speaks about angels that it's constantly towing the line. I don't want people to get the impression that you have to get rid of all your darkness because your darkness is a portal to extreme joy. If you sit with it, if you chew on it, if you learn how to metabolize it and allow it. So how many of you are ashamed, were ashamed of yourself because you're not feeling good because you're spiritual and you're not feeling the best. Like you should know better. You have all the tools, what's wrong with you? There's nothing wrong with you. You're just having a human experience. P.S. That's why we came here to be humans, not to be spiritual people. Why? Because we're already spiritual doy. Like we, we were doy, like doy, like we were here. We were spiritual beings before we got here. That's not why we came here. We came here to bring the spirit deeply into the flesh, the experience of the flesh. So by for allowing myself to go so dark, right? So it was so incredibly painful. I, I was like a crazy person, right? Like totally like it's like looked like I was probably from the outside. I was having a psychotic break, but I wasn't having a psychotic break. I was um, becoming whole. I was integrating. And it was awesome. So the angels, Archangel Haniel, wanted to help you transmute where you are giving your power away. That pain, that despair, that grief, that sadness, that self-judgment, help you transmute to bring joy and laughter into that field, into wherever it is that you're holding this boulder of disease, meaning this that and the disease is not the pain the disease is the perfectionism but it's the lie that is the disease so we're gonna start doing the um start doing an invocation for honey l and uh it's really a two-step process, really. One, you got to learn how to say fuck it and laugh at yourself. Fuck it. <laughs> Nine months pregnant. <laughs> Come on. I mean, Jesus. Oh, man. Right? Fuck it. I'm just going to do my best. Right? God. And bringing the energy of trans transmutation understanding our darkness behind our darkness is our power behind your power is the gift to the world right behind your pain is your power behind your power is your gift to the world and until we learn until you learn how to just look squarely in the face of your worst nightmare and accept it as who you are like yeah i may be balding and I'm fat <laughs> and I'm old compared to this guy, but fuck it. It's who I am right now on the outside. That's what's going on. But on the inside, I'm partying. I'm committed. I'm going to party. So fuck it. So what I want you to hold on to one area of your life where you really need that boost.
where you really like are fucking so tired of feeling ashamed of it. You're like, okay, in wrapped up in a, in addiction. You're big, you're drinking too much, you're eating too much, whatever. If you're feeling ashamed of it, you need to bring that into this. We need energy around this that is transmutable. We need to bring good frequency in there so it can transmute and bring you more joy. I can't stop drinking. Fuck it. All right. I'm doing my best right now. <laughs> and I'm going to do better in a, in a say, okay, I'm chain smoking. And I, I really meant to quit last week. And okay, fuck it. Okay. I'm doing my best. I'm stressed as fuck. We're doing my best, right? Spirit. I'm doing my best. Fuck it. And Jessica saying, what about accepting someone who has an addiction? Jessica, it's really actually quite simple to accept someone who has an addiction if you're not depending on them to make you happy. So if you're depending on anyone to make your happy, you happy, that's your job. And so a lot of us are engaged in like relationships. I don't know if it's a relationship that you're talking about, but like it's it's not, I mean, it's not about accepting, it's about honoring people's journey and knowing that their learning with the addiction is just as important as prayer sometimes. Because as a soul, we come here to learn, we come here to metabolize, we come here to master our essentially our 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 lives and emotions. But really, we came here to like play this game in these like weird meat suits. Like, hey, let's do some weird shit, guys. All right. Let's let's divide ourselves into like bodies and then party and see what happens. And and so, okay, so if it's your child with the addiction or someone that you deeply love, it's about holding boundaries. It's not necessarily about rejecting them, right? It's like you're accepting, okay, this is a real thing and you can manage it. You can have, you can take the steps that, you know, professionals say to take if someone in your close circle is going down the dark road, because sometimes when you're, they're really dark, they can't, you know, it's really hard for them to help themselves, but we all know they're not gonna heal until they're fucking ready. So it's hard to watch, it's like a train wreck. But your capacity to love yourself and to not personalize it is really important. It is not personal when someone is having an addiction. It's a very personal demon that they're dealing with and we personalize it and lose power over it. Now, I'm not saying it's, it's an easy road at all. It's not an easy road, um, but, but pulling back the need to, you know, I see it work with a lot of uh, married couples who one of them has an addiction and the other person's really personalizing the fact that they have an, the other person has an addiction. And they're like, well, they're supposed to be this for me and this for me and this for me. And it's like, well, you know, that's an option. I know you want the perfect life, but that's not your life right now. So what are you going to do about it? You know, you can have an intervention, you can lay down the law, you can put some boundaries down or you can fucking leave. All right. You got options, but you're, when you are just sitting around judging, waiting for someone to be a better spouse, it's not gonna work out, okay? You gotta take action. All right, anyways, I can go on and on. That's a whole other thing, okay. <sighs> so hard. So I'm sorry that you're, <laughs> you're dealing with that. Oh, oh, so it is your partner. You have not left his side. Jessica, you just have to really get clear with your heart, with spirit, what's your next step? in the moment okay and spirit you will intuitively be guided to the right thing for you and eventually you might have to escalate the choices but take your power back from that situation and start making it uh you know empowered moves you know set a boundary and say no mas when you're ready to say no mas i mean it's it's really it's you know it's shitty but that's why we need to take our power back yo all of us stop it with the whole hmm, wishing things were different accept things how they are first accept yourself okay <laughs> francis is saying better spouse that doesn't happen in my experience <laughs> i know i didn't want to say it but um there's always other things like you know lovers francis we've talked about this before all right okay <laughs> All right, you guys ready for some Archangel Haniel? Everybody have their thing. 
everybody have their thing they're going to send some energy to this is a daily practice but uh, right now they're showing showing this uh yeah it's like a armor or a suit that the spell that we're all under was with regards to perfection each one of you right now has to commit to letting that go and one way that they're showing me for today is imagining that you're wearing this suit of perfection that you just inherited from maybe your parents or like our culture that everything's got to be perfect got to have the ultimate career got to be of service got to you know none of that i mean come on stop it okay so we're going to do an invocation first um I want you to really get a feel for where you're storing some of this energy, this darker energy, this painful energy, where you're letting your power go, where are you storing it? And can you feel it? I really do want you to feel it. You might feel pressure in your neck, your shoulders, or like swirly in your stomach. You might feel a little cold or heavy. Where are you carrying this aspect of your life where you're feeling totally disempowered energetically? Where are you giving your power away? And so creator of all that is, Archangel Haniel and the angels of joy, I ask you to come to each person today and bring your powerful awareness and your powerful frequency to help transmute and to help metabolize some of this disempowerment, some of this despair, some of this self-judgment or judgment of others. And great spirit, I ask that you bring all the power back to each person that they've given away to the external world in any way that they have given it away, whether it's relationships or their finances or the politics or the pandemic. Everybody take a deep breath and let yourself receive all of these uh, energetics back, all of the power that you've given away. Take a breath. Especially with that one specific place in your life where you know you need to quit judging yourself you need to quit giving that shit away and you just really need to learn how to say fuck it so i want you to get real clear on what that thing is and i actually want you to <laughs> say fuck it um if you don't use the f word feel free to say fudge <laughs> or frick <laughs> please don't say frick say fudge <laughs> i don't know what you're gonna say let me know what you're saying but um First step is like, hey, I mean, and really that's like a proclamation that this will no longer have power over you in that way. And this is my addition. This is not the angel saying fuck it. This is me just going as a human. Sometimes you just got to say fuck it. So with that issue, you're going to say fuck it. And then you're going to let the angels kind of come and shift things around for you around that energy. And I'd like to connect you with what it feels like to just have acceptance of your life as it is of who you are as you are permission for that to say yes aloud and archangel honey would love to connect you with how to feel joy in the face of uh who you are and the things you maybe technically don't like how to just find joy in that how to enjoy the challenge and play the game and she's showing me children playing games and she really does want you to incorporate the energy of like hey you're just here to play a game hey i'm gonna like <laughs> i'm gonna keep working out i might keep on gaining weight but fuck it right this is a game i'm playing with myself right now it really feels like a game so how can you allow that game energy that playful energy to come into your financial situation uh your politics um and just help you simmer down and relax continuing to breathe allowing so angels work through your breath so it's important to invite the frequencies the energy in so thank you honeyel for coming around and i see her taking off armor it's like a chest plate 
and a back plate, especially a back plate. She's removing a, a back plate where you're like really guarded. And, and it's, she's saying it's sometimes about trust that you won't be able to like, like you won't be able to survive if you really let yourself experience the pain, the despair, the truth as it is. And she's saying you're stronger without this armor because your heart is is connected with source. Your heart is connected with the highest power. And so your heart is a lot more strong and resilient than you would think. And so the angels of joy are swirling around, helping you lift your vibe, like as in the humor is kind of way specifically, they're helping you uh, learn how to just fuck, say fuck it and laugh at the condition, at the situation that you're in so that it stops becoming other people's fault. It's not the culture's fault or the government's fault. I mean, a lot of, a lot of it is the government's fault, right? You know, the disparity of the middle class, the shrinking middle class. It's, you know, a lot of the decisions that we've made as a culture, not your fault. Okay, not your fault. But fuck it. I mean, seriously, fuck it. I'm just going to do my best. So allow that energy to sink in. And I want you to let me know if you can feel it penetrating, transmuting the heaviness around this issue. And Carrie saying that this is that is me said to my husband last week that I, I really feel if I don't hold it all together, I'll break apart. Carrie, the best thing that we can do is break apart. OK, quit holding it together. <clears throat> you don't have to hold it together. A lot of our addictions, their attempts at trying to keep it together. We don't want to feel the, the depth of the pain and the fear and the worry. But I'm telling you, it's digging, you're excavating into, into this gooey center, like a Tootsie Roll pop, a nice sweet spot. You got to let yourself dig into the depth of, of who we are, because on the other side is this cackling, amazing hag. Like I was a cackling, uh, shape-shifted uh, bird hag, and it felt great. Like I felt like, okay, I've already been through <laughs> the worst. I've just channeled all kinds of pain for like millions of people, it felt like. And I mean, come on. <laughs> you just gotta, whatever, good luck. Good luck. So this year, you know, this, this, uh, the, um, the, the joy, the despair to joy polarity that happened for me was last year. This year, and I had no reason to be experiencing that. This year, I have a lot of reasons to be experiencing that. We all do. And I felt really <laughs> pretty good. Pretty good considering I felt way worse last year. And I feel like it's from really helping. Like, I unraveled. And uh, let yourself. And Lynn facing, I've been agonizing over taking a new job offer. And she's saying, fuck it. I'm going for it. Yeah, man, seriously. God, we take everything so seriously and personal. Just, I mean, fuck it. Take the dang job. You got nothing to lose, uh, except for the old job. All right. So, okay, beautifuls. I, I'm interested what your takeaway is today. What is your takeaway? What are you going to commit to? Right? And isn't there a book called Fuck It? I think there's a book called Fuck It. I need to look into that book. Probably has a lot of really good wisdom in there. Oh, Daniel Clancy, you're just logging in. You need to go. <laughs> Make sure you watch this one. Okay? So uh, as soon as we're off, it'll convert to a live stream. All right, you guys. So Archangel Haniel, thank you for bringing this level of truth to us. And showing us the polarity of despair, which is joy. And you can look at your life right now, take an inventory and see where the dial needs to be turned up. And again, this is not about spiritual bypassing and pretending like you don't have problems. It's about super looking in the face of these problems and, and converting your energy around it, learning how to laugh at yourself, say, fuck it, and, and convert that energy into power, right? Turn it into a game. <laughs> so
so much love to each of you. And so we have another week of um, the summer of Love Fest. We still have readers coming up and doing some awesome things for you guys. So make sure to pop in the schedules in the uh, Seven Day Miracle Challenge Facebook group. And I'll be making more announcements along the way. This is my last official time that I'm coming in to say hello, but um, I will still be back and be making announcements here and there. So we'll see, we'll see. The future is unclear, do you know why? Because I'm staying really in the moment uh, because that's all I got. I got uh, in the moment. And so Spirit tells me what we're doing day by day. So, so much love to each of you party on everybody and make sure to make it all this really like weird game. It's just a weird game. Angel Juju coming at you.